Now, it's reported AJ Brimson will play centre. The reports were also that Campbell will play fullback, expected to beat Keono. Is it Keono? Keano? Keano Keeney. Keano Keeney uh, for the role. Uh, just a side note, I am surprised at how much noise Keeney is getting yep. to that he's, you know, obviously every team you're competing for spots, but I felt like Jaden Campbell is like, Locked like Campbell and Brimo are locked in ahead of Kinney, but I've been quite surprised at how much it's being pushed, even kind of from the Titans as well. Mm. That Kinney is like on an equal footing with them and potentially going to get the spot. He must be, you know, he must be, you know what, training the house down. <laughs> <laughs> he must be training the house yeah. down. Um, but yeah, anyway, Brimo to centers. Look, what I like about this is a decision has been made early, it looks like, and they're going with it. Um, now they actually have quite some good outside backs is is centre Brimo's best position no it's not in my opinion but we all have to look back at Tom Trevojevic best year who was it under it was under Desi now I know he was playing fullback but he went into origin and he played that kind of roaming role you know I'm sure Desi I guess had some influence on that and some input on that. And so I wonder, because I, I don't see Brimo being a typical center that sits out on his get wing, uh, sorry, on his edge and just basically waits for the game to kind of come to him, does his work. I think we're going to see a center that comes in, ball plays a little bit, scoots a little bit. So as I said, I'm not sure if I'm sold on Brimo moving to center, but what I am sold on is for too many years, it's two years now, They've been umming and ahhing with Campbell at 14 when he's not a 14. He's also not a six. And they've gone, you know what? We need Campbell in the starting side. We know Brimo can play anywhere in the outside backs, essentially. And they've made the decision early. Thoughts? Yeah, I like. I personally think Brimson is the best fullback at the club. Mm. Agreed. But it is such an... And you know what? There's... You know, when I, when I have a look at them, like, like Keeney looks like he is super talented, but he's not proven in first grade. Yeah. Jaden Campbell is... Proven in first grade, Brimson's proven at state of origin level. Mm. So I like he. I think he is the best fullback at the club. But I agree, just to make it all work, I think you're better off having Jaden Campbell at fullback. Mm. I think it's very evident from what we've seen of Jaden Campbell that you can't have him defending in the front line. Mm. Uh, so fullback, I think, is his best position. And then, you know, for, for me, I, I straight away just I'd rather have AJ Brimson at five eight, for example. Yeah. But then, what are you doing? You're moving Kieran four and a half back, which Tanner gets pushed to maybe 14. Tanner gets pushed. If Kieran Form retires at the end of this year, you've had Tanner sitting on the bench for a year. So, like, there, there's all, like, I think it's very evident what the Gold Coast Titans have done and there is direction. I hate it for AJ Brimson, to be completely honest with you. But that centre role, it is just, it's adapting so much in the modern game. The centre mm. role is almost becoming like what the lock forward role was four or five years ago. It's You, you use it how it suits your team almost. Mm. Yeah. Like, for me, for example, when Val Holmes got moved to the centre, I straight went, I fucking hate that. He's mm. not a centre. Yeah. Now I love him at centre. Yeah, and he, he does play it quite a unique way too. He does, yeah. Almost like a winger way. to a degree. And as you said, you know, when you look at Desi Hasler, he's got a history with certain guys. Like, oh, I look at the way that he used to use Jamie Lyon at centre. Mm. Like, Jamie Lyon played like no other centre in the game. Yeah, he was pretty correct. much playing a second 5-8 role. Yeah. I think with Brimo, sure, you wear three or four on your back, but you play AJ Brimson footy. Mm. You do your thing out there. And I think, yeah. I think, I think it can work. It's just... Uh, it's just when we... Like, for the Gold Coast Titans that have never... Been able to attract, you know, absolute superstar all-time talents to be able to have these three guys in the same room. I think you've just got to make it work somehow. Mm. Maybe this is the best way to do it. Speaking of superstars, you know they missed on Guru. Yeah, myself. Yeah, <laughs> they never forgave themselves. Not if I was in the recruitment department. <laughs> they never forgave themselves. Yeah, they're still kicking themselves for that. <laughs> um, <laughs> Local junior, mate. Well, not a local junior, actually. Just a local that happened to be. Could you have been a foundation player? <laughs> hey? Could you have been a foundation player with that have lined up? 06, you could have been, couldn't you? Were you in the Broncos system? No, I was in uh, Broncos system 05, I think. Like so. Yeah, so, so they came in in 06, so you could have. 07, 07 came in. So I think it might have been just a year too early. Yeah, okay. Um, did, did you and Jordi Rapana cross paths through juniors? I know you're a late bloomer, late starter, I should say. Well, I, did, I didn't play any juniors. That's what I mean. Yeah. But yeah. even like it sort of, when did you start? 17, 18 or something? I went straight into Broncos under 19s. 19s. Because, yeah, Rapper was a, he's a Gold Coast junior as well, similar age. Mm. Just thought you might have crossed paths. No, nah, no, nah, I went because the Brisbane side that was under 19s for Broncos was West. West um, and we played in the, in the Brisbane comp. So. Cross paths, Kavalav? Um... 
dangerous. Good. I mean, the only time I remember going to Cabo Lab, I got in a massive punch on. If I'm being <laughs> honest. Guys called me some slurs and I could defend myself. <laughs> Had me, I, just, I defended myself. <laughs> I said, I'm not that slur, you just called me. Even though it's okay if you are, I'm not that. <laughs> Got the fisticuffs up, defended my honour, <laughs> even though it's okay. Get your dukes up. Handled myself all right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, Brimo to centre. <laughs> um, look, I think that, okay, if there is one knock on the halves pairing, for the Titans, is that attacking punch they don't have. Like, so Foran, he's older, so he doesn't have that explosiveness, even though I think that Tanner and, and Foran, I thought Foran was great last year, but that punch that that you compare to like a Dylan Brown or a Cam Munster, they don't really have, which is okay, because you get traders for it. But the beauty about that is I feel that at times, as you suggested, Brumo can go, all right, boys, I'm gonna jump in at six for this set, Tanner or whoever, just jump out there for a little bit, yeah. probably Tanner. Um, and we, and that's how he can kind of get Brimo in the game where he needs to be, almost like five metres in closer than a fullback would be. And you're going to see sets of Brimo to Campbell, which is scary as shit. And that's where I'm very confident that this all looks a little bit strange to us, as most things Des Hasler mm. does are. It all doesn't quite make sense. Like, I remember the early 2010s when we were in the absolute peak of the wrestle and everything and he had this Canterbury side where all the forwards were passing the ball 15 times a game you go what the fuck's that they go to two grand finals in three years mm. like Desi just sees it all a little bit differently mm. um, and that's the beauty of Des Hasler so I'm sure it'll look a little bit strange I'm, I can't wait for the press conferences with Des Hasler to be back and oh, man. hearing him explain all this when everyone's doubting him and he just sits there and goes yeah, good as gold I'll show you how it's done what do you reckon Timmy? yeah I don't like it at all to be honest with you I, I just think you know, we know how much of a talent AJ Brimson is in the game. He's done it at origin level. He's done it, you know, for a fair while now at club level. I just think he's such a star of our game. He has a lot of, like, probably what, soft tissue injuries where he misses games here and there and he'll miss two months and he'll come back one game at fullback, 5'8", whatever it is, and he'll be the best player on the field. Like, he is a freak. And I just think you, you're taking such opportunity away from him to impact the game at centre. Mm. I don't think Sen is his position at all. Uh, I think, as you, you mentioned, and I'll get to in a sec, around Desi and how he may or may not utilise him. He'll find a way to get him involved in games, but I just think, I wish he was at fullback. I would probably have him at 5'8", um, and have Kieran Foran playing as a seven, getting around the park. Foz does that anyway. He wears the six, but he's a great game manager. And if you need to step up and do it even more so alongside someone like AJ Brimson, I think Brimo's wasted at centre. How will Desi use him? He'll have a plan there. He'll get him more involved, but you're also potentially overcomplicating things a little bit. Get him roaming, get him involved, but oh, I, I, I don't like it. But I think that's the – and that if you're talking about 2024 standalone season, mm. I would do that as well. But, you know, if Foz retires at the end of this year, we're sitting here in a year's time going, okay, well, who's the mm. halfback? We haven't seen Weaver. We haven't seen Tanner Boyd in a year now. So I think the Titans are – are trying to look a little bit further down the yeah. track. And, and even like you look at, uh, which is fair, uh, you look at saying Val Holmes made the move. Val, as you mentioned, Kebby, he's almost like another winger because he has such a high work rate. He runs that real hard, bat out of hell line, which I don't, not saying Brimson can't do that, but I don't think that's his strengths. Mm. He's got a good running game, but it's because he's got such nimble footwork. He sees what's in front of him opening up really well, reads a game. I think Senna's weird. I am super excited to see how it plays out mm. and how Desi plans to get him involved and where he's going to... He said he like he has to roam and, and get involved and try him into the back line in different spots. That's exciting. Mm. I just... I don't rate it. I'll tell you what, I think the Gold Coast Titans, uh, and it's credit to them, I guess, but geez, they're lucky just how loyal AJ Brimson oh. is to the Gold Coast. Because mm. if I was AJ Brimson, like, I personally, I, I think he's a top 10 fullback in rugby league. Mm. I don't think... I think higher. Real, I, I think higher too, but at minimum, top 10 fullback. Yeah. And at the moment, he might not be top two at his club. Mm. And, and then you add in the defensive concerns. I don't know if he's played much outside backs in his career. I'm going to assume not. Certainly not at NRL level, maybe in juniors. It's a big, big job. We talk about it all the time, but to go from defending as a fullback to a centre, he's going to get so much pressure out there. Mm. So I'm... Yeah, it's, I'm just, it's such a... I, I believe Brimson is the best fullback at the club, but it is such a tough question that you have to ask yourself as a coach. Do we 
continue developing the most key position on the field, number seven, and trade that in for giving Brimo a better position, which may be six, and getting Campbell on the field. It's like, I think that it's just one of those decisions where there's no right answers. Like, you're going to lose somewhere. Yeah. And I think that Desi's probably sat down and gone, where's the one place you can't lose the most out of everything? It's number seven. Mm. And I think that's probably what swayed his decision of, Tanner Boyd seems like the guy going forward for them. If not, Weaver, but Tanner Boyd seems like the guy. If I take something away from that position by not letting him play for the year or putting him in reserve grade, how much is that going to impact my chances of winning a comp? Whereas if I take Brimo and put him in the centres and Campbell gets more game time, how much does that negatively impact us winning a comp? Probably not that much. Not that much. Yeah, and I'd play Tanner at 14 if I did how, how I sort of structured the spine. And I understand that they're in a tough place and Desi's come in and he's, it's a, he's got this luxury. He's got so many riches to choose from with all these talented players. What a great position for the club to be in, firstly. Mm. They've been in it for a couple of years now. Mm. And it's finally now they're saying, all right, make the big call to get them all in. We've got to play Brimson. And I understand it. <coughs> I just... I personally would have gone a different way from it. I, I understand the, you know, the emphasis on the number seven, wanting to keep Tanner Boyd. If I was to put Tanner Boyd to 14, I'd feel horrible because he deserves to be and he's proven that he's good enough to be a starting number seven in the NRL. Mm. But they've just got this such luxury of riches. Mm. I just think with the Tanner situation, you need him playing as many minutes as possible as the seven in NRL. Mm. Like if as a club, you need to commit to that seven... Otherwise, it's going to be, let's say, you know, you moved into 14, you're heading into 2025 going, is Tanner Boyd the guy? Is he not the guy? Now, if he goes there and doesn't play well, let's say Tanner has a bad year, you go, well, he's not the guy we need to recruit, we need to bring, you know what I mean? You get answers. Um, I, I know this is not a great way of looking at it, but Kieran Four and AJ Brimson, quite a, a, a terrible injury history between them. They've missed a lot of games over their careers. If you've got Tanner at 14, I think there's every chance you see him starting for a lot of games this year anyway. But I think you also want to build that belief in Tanner that you're the guy. Yeah, yeah. You're the sure. guy moving forward. Yeah. Like, AJ can be the superstar, but they need someone to give them direction. And mm. like, oh, I think the Titans, like, I think their forward pack is unreal. So it's exciting. fantastic. So they've got that sorted. It's, but you're right, like, it is just such a tough position that if you're trying to get the best team on park in 2024, I think it's Brimson at six, mm. Foz at seven. But then if Foss retires at the end of the year, you're there, like you're just left going, okay, well, where are we now? Mm. And you talk about like <coughs> clubs in rebuilding phases like Tigers, like the Dragons, the Doggies. Look, I don't think the Titans are going to win the comp this year, but I do think they can make the eight. Mm. And I think best case scenario, they can be pushing for top four because they've got so much talent in this roster. So it's not like you go, all right, 2024, we build and we add to 2025. I'm like, no, I want to have success this year. Like mm. we've got a good side. Yeah. It, it, I think if I'm looking at it, I, like, I agree with you. At best, they can finish top four. At, at okay, satisfactory, they should be at least fighting for the eight. But when I look at the age of that forward pack mm. and I look at the age of Tanner Boyd, I go, when are we really going to win a comp? It's going to be at the super earliest 25, but probably six mm. or seven. And I think that's probably what's made him wait up and going, okay, He's safe the first year. Whatever happens, he's going to be safe. Oh, that's where he's gone. He's, they're not going to come out and... Be, like, Desi Hazler is never going to come out into a season and go, I'm just going to build for next year. Yeah. But I just think that if his goal is a premiership, it's the, I think it's the right call for the club as a whole, but it's probably not the right call for Brimo individually. Um, but I totally see what you're saying. Like, and, I, it's, it's, and fuck, it's tough. It's if, so tough. It's so tough. If Desi makes it work and he, he tailors a game plan and this unique style of centre for AJ Brimson, so exciting. Mm. Like, and he does manage to make it all fit without taking away, you know, the ball playing strengths of AJ Brimson. Like, they could go. Maybe, maybe it's also a potential, maybe Desi's buying time of going, okay. Brimo's going to be around for a while. I want to see how he defends in the front line. Foz retires next year. And then I, I move Brimo into that six role because I've seen how he goes for that first year of NRL defending in the front line. Maybe that's what he's looking at. Yeah, like a, a, a little look into the future. Yeah. A Brimo-Tanner-Halves combination. Yeah. Yes, please. Because that, that is something nice. that's exciting. And if you're, you know, I know it's one over and centre is different defending at three, but it's 
much closer than defending a fullback. Like, may close. So what do you reckon, Hemi? Well, I just wonder how Brimo feels about having to play in the centres. It's probably my big question. I think you've raised some good points, and particularly Campy, about, like, getting them all out on the field now uh, and, and kind of also keeping a bit of an eye to the future there too. I, I don't know. I just feel like he's a little bit wasted at centre. Mm. But, um, yeah, I mean, you just got to get him out there and make it work for the balance of the team, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, I don't think he'd want to be like a long-term centre though. So whether, you know, your point there about him moving into six after a year or two um, might be the way to go. But, I, I, yeah, I don't know how he's feeling about it. And, you know, if, he, if he's sitting there at centre and that, that's where he's got to play because they've got Campbell there, is that the sort of thing that might make him want to look around a little bit? Mm. Um, and you definitely don't want to lose him. So mm. tough situation, but, um, you know, they've probably just done the best with, with what they've got at the moment. Boys, you want a super catch up tip? Yep. Yes, please. Campbell, fullback. Not bad. Paying up for You're it. You're actually on the radar here. There you go. There yeah. you go. There's your tip. It's free this time. Won't be free next time. <laughs> <laughs> How do you got? feel about Bo Fermo returning? Mate, love it. Love it. Uh, I'm actually excited for Bo Fermo because he was. Was he in the Queensland squad? He was definitely in the conversation. He was on Queensland. The yep. um, yeah, can't wait to see him back. Uh, but with the Titans. I am so excited for them as a club. I'm writing an article as we speak on the Titans, but like, it's almost uh, sink or swim from at the moment where there's almost no excuses anymore. They've got good backers of the club, like good owners of the club. They've got one of the best coaches we've seen in a very long time. Their roster is one of the best young forward packs in the competition. Like, there really is no excuse for them not to be playing finals footy over the next couple of years. And the beauty of the massive problem we're talking about is literally they've got too much talent. Yeah, yeah. which has always a been a unbelievable drama for Like, as you said, like, obviously, Kieran Foran. A lot of injuries over the last few years. Like, it's almost at the point where if during the year, if Kieran Foran has a five or six week spell, I go, okay, mm. let's have a look what 2025 looks like. It's yeah. almost, there's almost a silver lining if Foz does miss a little bit of footy. Like, there was times last year where I was watching Foz and, you know, he's just too tough for his own good, but I was going, fuck, he needs a few weeks off here. Yeah. And if they get to that point again this year, which I reckon they probably will because Foz is too tough for his own good, it would be great to see Tanner and Brimo have a few weeks yeah. together. Yeah. And you go, all right, Foz goes down, you move Brimo into the halves, or you get what, Aussie schoolboys half that, Tom Weaver come yep. in. But what, what really excites me at Weaver, and we're getting ahead of ourselves because we're doing the season preview, but what excites me at Weaver <laughs> is he has a massive boot on him. And I think that's one part of the Titans game where you're like, Foz can kick, decent. Uh, Tanner Boyd, decent, but they don't have that massive boot that Weaver did. I think he, he ended up kicking for like 800, 900 metres on his debut, like yeah, a lot. Yeah. Um, that's exciting because like you look at the best team in the comp, Nathan Cleary, what does he have that is better than everyone else? It's a short, long, medium range kicking game. Um, but yeah, really exciting times for the uh, Titans.